I'm 74 years old. I am in the best shape of my life, despite drinking a bottle of wine a day, but my exercise seems to override everything. My name is Norma Williams, Norma R. Williams. I'm a pensioner, but I do run a holiday rental business and I've done that for about 20 years now. I also do some uh, part-time modelling, just little bits and pieces for local shops. I live in Spoleto, which is uh, in Umbria, in Italy. Quite honestly, I think by accident. When I was young, when I was in my 20s, I had major problems with um, body dysmorphia, uh, eating disorders. Um, my weight was yo-yo, completely out of control. Uh, I was in severe depression. I mean, life was just horrendous. I just wanted to commit suicide all the time. But then I enrolled for a night class and I met and I started to see the lecturer. He was a few years younger than me. And then I, uh, I married him within a year. Um, and, and he helped me tremendously with my mental disorders. <laughs> I then started a philosophy degree after doing A-levels and that helped me tremendously as well. Throughout all this entire time, I was exercising like crazy to use up calories all the time. And gradually, I think it took about maybe five years of exercising every day. And I realized that counting calories was a waste of time because it didn't really matter what you ate because so long as you exercised, everything seemed to start to fall into place. I was still eating very, quite badly. He'd improved my diet somewhat. He cooked. I've never cooked a thing in my life. He cooked everything. My current husband cooks everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a domestic goddess. All my husbands have been domestic goddesses, not me. And so he taught me more about eating, but I still wasn't good. I still ate like millions of wine gums every day, like tons of them. I also had millions of apples, which also contributed to the acid in my stomach, which gave me a lot of pain. Um, but still, I continued with the exercise to lose weight. And gradually, after about 10, 15, 20 years or so, I, I just noticed, well, I think that I first noticed when I went into a changing room when I was in my mid-30s, and I, and I saw my body compared to younger girls, and, and I began to see that my body had started to get slight indentations all over it. And I thought, these are muscles. <laughs> it was, I think it was about 35 when I started to notice these little tiny muscles happening all over my body. And I enjoyed very much the way I looked. I was a lot bigger than I am now, but I didn't matter anymore because the exercise that I was doing all the time, I was swimming, cycling, Walking fast, I was doing a lot of exercise every single day, as well as for holding down a full-time job, because by this time, I'd got a job as a full-time philosophy lecturer. I started to get huge amounts of compliments when I was going into shops, and the assistants always wanted to help me, because they used to like dressing me like a doll, because I fitted into everything. And by this time, I was even slimmer. So I kind of lost weight over the years, but it took many, many years, and it was a natural loss of weight. It was a natural toning of the body. And by the time I was in my 60s, I suppose I was, um, I suppose I was about 61 kilograms, something about nine and three quarter stone, something like that, nine and a half, nine and three quarter stone, which is a perfectly good weight. And then I think it was around, by the time I'd hit 70, I'd gone down a bit more. I was down to about 60 kilograms, 61 kilograms, um, which is about nine and a quarter, nine stone, something like that. So I, gra I, I gradually started to get more and more slim and I gradually got more and more muscly. I think part of why I lost weight is because my diet continued to improve over the years and I continued to exercise. So necessarily I began to lose weight or I continued to lose weight because I wasn't eating stupid things anymore. My diet was improving all the time. 
but without me really knowing or understanding, there was never any intention about it. It just happened. But that it just happened made me realise, as I hit 70 and in my 70s, it made me realise that it's possible. The fact that it happened by accident means that you can go back and do it by intention. And younger people now are doing it by intention. I didn't know what I was doing. This is a big, big thing because of the fact that I've suffered in the early part of my life through dieting. I honestly do believe that anyone who is uh, attempting to control the way they eat must not, number one, count calories, and must not, number two, deprive themselves. And I think they are the two biggest rules that you should go by. If you want to eat something, it, it's really easy. What happens is that you should say to yourself, you've got to give yourself permission. Let me think about today, like now. If after my dinner, I decide I want nuts, but I'm a little bit heavier in the morning, and I know I shouldn't, I, sh I know that really to be lighter tomorrow morning or to not gain weight tomorrow morning, I know I should just stick to normal eating today and not eat not bingy, but sometimes a lot, not sometimes, a lot, several times a week, I'll think, oh, especially after I've had half a bottle of wine, I'll think, oh no, I want, I want nuts, I want mixed nuts, I want all those cashew nuts and all those walnuts and all those Brazil nuts and everything like that. And so he gives me like a huge carton of them and I think, I'll just eat a few. And then I think, no, oh, I want to eat the lot. If I want to eat the lot, I'm going to eat the lot. So, I want to eat a lot, I eat them and I don't feel guilty because I allow myself, you know? The biggest problem for people who are trying to lose weight is two psychological problems they have. And one is they failed to do what they set out to do that particular day, i.e. eating all the right things. And number two, they feel guilty for having failed to do what they intended to do that day. So I say get rid of that feeling of failure and get rid of the guilt. Just allow yourself to, to just be free to eat what you want. My routine really is I get up around about eight o'clock, seven o'clock. I do a little bit of work um, to do with my holiday rental business. Uh, I have my second cup of tea because I have my first cup of tea in bed when I wake up. Um, as the kettle's boiling, I'm doing my weight. Uh, I do 50 reps or mixed reps. And then sometimes I'll do an extra 50 crunches on the bed. Around about 10 o'clock, I go for my 90 minute walk, a very fast walk. I fly, I mean, I basically fly, um, but I walk for probably nine kilometers in 90 minutes. So I don't really know how that works out. I usually stop, meet my husband at a coffee bar, outside coffee bar, which is beautiful, beautiful views and everything, mountains and valleys. And that's when I have my breakfast and I have my, uh, I have a cornetto with, um, stuffed with honey. It's an integrale cornetto stuffed with honey and a cappuccino and a possibly a second cappuccino with two sugars each time. And then maybe we, we walk around town. It's a beautiful little town. And maybe we stop at another couple of bars and maybe I have another couple of cappuccinos or an espresso or something. Uh, and so we have a nice time going back home. And then as soon as I get back home, I'll have a cup of tea with two sugars. And then I get on with some more work. Sometimes we go for a bit of a rest in the afternoon for maybe maybe an hour because often after my fast walking, um, I do stiffen up. You know, I do start to ache a lot. Um, you know, my body is pretty pushed at that 90 minutes. But I find that if I lie down on the bed for half an hour, it all goes completely. Uh, and I'm completely ache free. And I have to add that when I get up in the morning, um, I have no aches or pains. I have nothing. Then after that, I probably, I practice my Italian with my Italian friends. And then possibly we go out for dinner um, around about eight o'clock. Yeah, I, I spend about an hour getting ready. I can, I'm a bit Dolly Partnish. I can get ready in about five minutes if I have to, but I prefer, put all my makeup on the tray in front of me. I prefer to be very leisurely. 
I love playing around with makeup and hair and all of that. I love doing that. It's like I'm my own doll. So I, I enjoy getting ready. And then we go for a meal with friends or on our own. I prefer being on our own. I love just being on my own glory. Yeah, that's it. Very nice life. They tend to be equally distributed between the good and the bad. I have a lot of male followers on Facebook and Instagram and female followers, but the males are very complimentary, not in a horrible way, but I had one very sweet boy um, the other day. He wrote to me on Instagram. <laughs> he said, I know this sounds really weird because I'm only 18. But I think I'm in love with you. <laughs> Oh, I do. I do think that is really important because a lot of people say that when you get older, you become invisible. And these people have really become invisible to younger people because they're not doing anything. They're not doing anything with their lives. They're not, they don't know what, what modern life is about anymore. They just sit and watch Netflix, which is a great thing to do. I, I enjoy watching Netflix very much, but that's all they do. You know, watch Netflix, travel and drink. I like the challenge of work. I mean, <clears throat> working for yourself has many ups and downs. Um, and sometimes, you know, days don't go well, you have problems and it's, it's like, oh, why am I doing this? You know, I could just spend the day in bed. Oh. But, you know, the next day it goes well and it's wonderful. I am engaging with, with a whole load of other people with my work as well. Not only guests, but with my collaborators, the people whose villas I rent out for. So I meet them on a regular basis and they become friends. And so you've got a lot in common. And so I'm meeting lots and lots of different people from all different um, echelons of life, usually wealthy people. Um, but they all have very interesting lives. Some of them are a little bit older. They all have businesses, big businesses, global businesses, and we go out for dinners together and everything like that. And I hear about their lives and they hear about my life. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun to have something in common that binds you together. So like with my young friends, it's makeup and clothes and all that kind of thing. So I'm relevant in that way, but it's not enough. You know, intellectually, I'm relevant with all my business partners and all the guests and things like that. I live in a city, Spoleto, which is quite a small city. And, and I'm known in this city, not only because of the way I look, but I'm known because I bring tourism into the city. And the shopkeepers and the restaurateurs and everybody, they know that Norma contributes heavily to the economy of our little city by bringing tourism to here and, and all around the area. Uh, and I'm respected for that. And I like to be respected for that. You know, we have a lot of big labels, big, big names in Spoleto. We are the main olive oil producing um, area. We're the main wine producing area. And we're the main tartufo, truffle producing area. And although these are big, big global companies, all these families I know and all these families I, I mix with, we're all friends together, we all got the same hairdressers, same shops, same everything. So little me in my little tiny business, you know, we still relate with each other because these families are Italian families and unlike English families, Italian families all still work. So they may be a global brand, but they work within their companies, you know? So they're working the same as me. And we all respect each other because people are getting to know their brands when they come and visit the area. So it's it's just great, you know, to to, to be a part of a, an active part of the community, to never stop being an active part of the community. Because otherwise you, you, are, you do just become invisible.